We had a pair of good races talking about the Arkham Menard series at Mid-Ohio and the Xfinity series at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Let's talk about these two entertaining races and their finishes. Hello everyone. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news, and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. What did you think about the Arkham Menard series at Mid-Ohio? And what did you think about the Xfinity series at the Motor Mile? Before I talk about the Arca race at Mid-Ohio and the Xfinity Series race in New Hampshire. I do want to apologize. I had made a video for last weekend's race at Iowa for the Arkham and Art Series and the Xfinity Series. But by the time I had time to get to editing it, it was already, the, the Mid-Ohio race was already going on in the Arkham and Art Series. It was already Friday. So at that point, I didn't see too much of a point of making it. Like I said, I apologize and I will be more consistent with these videos. As you see, this video is coming out on a Tuesday and expect them out on Tuesdays from now on because now I will be recording, recording these events for the video right after the races instead of recording it during the week and then editing it out throughout the week. It just, di it just didn't work out this week and I think the week before, the week before that, it was a little bit late on the release, so from now on, expect my Xfinity Series, Truck Series, Arkham Menard Series breakdowns to release on Tuesday night at the very latest Wednesday morning. Let's start with that Arkham Menard Series race, because that's two straight weekends where we've had entertaining races in the Arkham Menard Series. Early on in the event, it seemed like four drivers had really separated themselves from the field. The four drivers at the beginning of this race that were really separating themselves from the field were Connor Mozak, William Swalich, Brent Cruz, and Dale Cordley. Dale is 63 years old. He's a competitor in the Arkham Menard series, and they said that they built a specially made car for this event because Dale Quarterly thought he could compete for the win. And he was lightning fast at the beginning portion of this race. He might have even been the fastest car in the field at the beginning portion of this race. Looking like he might take the lead. And then right before he might take the lead, it looked like, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but something went, went wrong with this car. He started leaking fluid on the racetrack parked his car, and unfortunately that was the end of the hopes of Dale Quarterly winning at Mid-Ohio. Another driver that ended up pretty much taking Dale's place as the surprise competitor for the win was Thomas Anunziata. I'm sorry if I'm saying that name wrong, but this is a pretty cool story. He's been getting some starts here and there as of late. He races a lot of road course racing, Trans Am racing, does a lot of sort of racing like that. He's also a pretty big presence on Instagram. I actually follow him on Instagram, his actual page, and he has, I think it's called NASCAR Old Times Instagram page. He stays pretty active doing whatever he is he's doing. He, he He's very personable, and it, it's a good story to see from him. He was also driving a Jeff Gordon throwback. We'll talk a little bit more about Thomas in a little bit. So we had a couple of drivers mixing it up for the lead at that point. But once we got to that halfway break and these teams were really able to make some adjustments to their cars, you saw two drivers just completely whoop the field from there on out. And that was Connor Mozak and Brent Cruz. Some of you may have heard of both of these drivers before Connor Mozak. Another Trans Am sort of guy does a lot of road course racing, whatever he can get into, he gets into and drives the wheels off that car. A very great race car driver looking for a great opportunity. I feel like he's never really had that. He has a couple of starts with Gibbs in the Xfinity Series and he has performed 
pretty well on the road courses for them. And then the other driver that seemed to be the fastest car was the young driver of Brent Cruz. Some of you may know Brent Cruz. Brent Cruz has already won a championship at the Trans Am level, the Trans Am 2 Series. The youngest champion of that series has won in multiple other series as well, whether it's a road course or an oval. He seems to be really competitive. And a lot of people in the industry point at him and Connor Zilich as the two next great NASCAR drivers. We'll have to see. I'm learning more and more about Brent Cruz as we go, but he seems like a very talented young race car driver. Well, it looked like it was only going to be these two competing for the win. Then we got some late cautions, with, which brought everybody else close to them. And then we had a restart at the very end of this race, pretty much setting up a green-white checkered finish. You had Mozak and Brent Cruz on the front row. And if you see right here, it looks like Connor Mozak just barely, barely beats Cruz to the start finish line. They ended up giving him a black flag. Brent Cruz would end up having some issues on this restart, would end up going backwards. Very unfortunate, had a very strong car, looked like he could potentially win the race. And it really opened up the race. Here at the end, you had Thomas Anunziata, who ended up taking the lead away from Mozak, who got the black flag, ended up getting turned around by Mozak. That really, that was really awful for Thomas. Thomas had a great run, and if Mozak didn't do that, he could have won the race, and that could have been a fantastic story, but that is not what happened. He ended up going around, which relinquished the lead to William Swalich, who didn't really have a big time challenger here in the last two laps. Mozak continued to stay on their stay on the track. Ended up crossing the line first, but got the black flag. Ended up finishing as the last driver on the lead lap, giving the win to William Sawalich. Sawalich ran pretty well all day. I'd say he was probably the third or fourth best car throughout the day. Always seems to perform on the road courses. And for the most part, I'm usually pretty harsh on Sawalic. He can get a little bit over-aggressive at times and even a little bit dirty at times, which is okay. It's NASCAR, but sometimes he does it a little bit too much. Like last week at Iowa, I considered him to be way too aggressive, almost trying to wreck Connor Zilic at points. He he did this one the right way. I'm, uh, you got you to put a little asterisk next to it that he won the race because Mozak got penalized and Brent Cruz got spun around. Either way, though, William Swalich was the one with the checkered flag driving the number 18 for Joe Gibbs Racing in the Arkham Menard Series. Another victory for him, a good young race car driver. We'll see if he can continue this momentum into Berlin. Now let's talk about the Xfinity Series race. I'm recording this on Saturday, the race just finished not all that long ago and it was a very entertaining race i'd say you had two drivers that were pretty dominant i think there was a third driver that was as quick but faced issues all day the two dominant drivers i'd say were cole custer and christopher bell and the third driver that i think that was on the same level but faced issues all day long was justin allgaier showed a lot of speed as well before we get to the finish, I really want to talk about, I'd say, to be the big story of the day. The driver of that number 19 today making his first start in the NASCAR Xfinity Series was Justin Bonsignor. I'm sorry if I butchered that name. Uh, I'm not super familiar with him. I've, I've seen the name before. I feel like anytime we come to New Hampshire for the Whelan Tour event, I see his name up there. He ended up winning the event today in the Wheel and Modified Series, actually. Congratulations to him. But he ran a great race, was running up in the top five all race long. There was a good portion of the race where he was running second and third. Just showed so much speed, so much smarts in the car. That race craft was just phenomenal to see. I was really impressed. Unfortunately, Late on in the event, he got involved in an incident, ended up going around. Same thing with his teammate Chandler Smith. It was a very interesting end to this race for Joe Gibbs Racing. But I want to give huge props to Justin. I hope to see him 
make some more Xfinity Series starts, whether that's on more short tracks or short track-like tracks like in New Hampshire or maybe even a speedway or even a super speedway. I would really like to see him get some more starts and some more opportunities. Carson Quaffle also did really well today, but that's kind of expected at, at this point with him. We had a couple of drivers in the field making one of their first Xfinity Series starts in Carson Quaffle, and then Justin Bonsignor making his first start was extremely impressive. Congratulations to him. I think he ended up finishing like 20th or 23rd, something like that. That did not signify what he ran. He had a top five, top three car all race long. So congratulations to him on that phenomenal run. But let's talk about the end of this race. I mentioned Chandler Smith got spun around. Chandler Smith spun himself around underneath Sheldon Creed. And I feel like that incident kind of set up the end of this race as we had a couple of cautions at the end of this race. I ended up having a green-white checkered finish to finish it all. Cole Custer trying to hold off the field. But it looked like to me in those last two restarts, he really struggled and turns one and two and just maybe even overdrove the entry, just lost grip in the center off and really opened up the door the first time around to Christopher Bell. The second restart, which ended up being the last restart of the event, Christopher Bell did not get nearly as good of a restart as he did the previous time. Cole Custer ended up having the same issue. He slid up the racetrack. He was really slow off the corner. It opened up the door for Sheldon Creed. Creed had a big run coming down the back straightaway. Ended up getting a little bit into the bumper of Cole Custer in the middle of three and four, which opened up the door not just for him, but for his teammate Christopher Bell. They went three wide going into turn one and two. Creed was able to clear Custer. And at this point, it seemed like it was probably going to be Bell versus Creed for the win. But Cole Custer trying to get himself back into the battle, maybe even a little bit of payback on Sheldon Creed, gets into the back of Creed, gets Creed sideways. He loses time. Custer loses time. And at this point, Bell drives away very easily for the win, getting his fourth straight victory at New Hampshire Motor Speedway in the Xfinity Series. He has four starts at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, and he has four wins very impressive if you saw my preview video he was also my pick to win the cup series race my post race video at this point for the cup series should be out as well so we'll see if that prediction pays off maybe he can sweep the weekend but very impressive performance from c bell like i said i, I considered christopher bell and cole custer to be the two best cars all race long sheldon creed was probably the fifth best car but did the most he could at the end of that race. And honestly, if Custer did not get into the back of him in one and two, Sheldon Creed probably would have his first career victory right now. But I guess we'll never know. And that's racing. He got in the back of Custer. Custer got in the back of him. That's all That's all fair in that sort of situation. But just very unfortunate to see. I'm a huge Sheldon Creed fan. And that is his 10th second place finish tying I think it was Dale, Jar Dale Jarrett's the one with the record, having 10 second-place finishes before their first victory in the Xfinity Series. But the last couple weeks, he's been really doing really well, Sheldon Creed. He's been up there battling it out for the win the last couple of weeks. And I've really seen a complete 180 from him. The same thing with Chandler Smith. It almost seems like they've gotten into different cars over the last five or six weeks. Because Chandler Smith has fallen off a cliff while Sheldon Creed is all of a sudden competing for wins week in and week out. Very interesting scenario with those two. But I, I think, like I said, I think if Sheldon Creed continues up the performances he's been putting in, he will end up in victory lane sooner rather than later. But give me all your thoughts down below about the Xfinity Series race, about Seabell's performances at New Hampshire, and maybe let me know, when do you think Sheldon Creed will get to victory lane? Because I would love to know when that's going to happen. But that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, saying peace. Yeah.